Welcome to this Greg Space Shed lesson. Today we're going to look at how slowing things down can really help you to play accurately when you speed them back up again. One of the most common questions I get asked by bass students, especially beginners and intermediate players, is how do I play faster? If you're a beginner, to start with your fingers just won't move as fast as you want them to, even when you know what the notes are. This isn't surprising though, because playing an instrument simultaneously engages most parts of your brain and you have to develop this skill over time. If you're an intermediate bass player, then you might struggle more with playing certain riffs and patterns accurately and cleanly. My advice to everyone is to slow down. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't ever play fast. If you wanna play certain things fast, then you have to eventually practice playing fast. But playing slow should be a part of your practice session and especially part of the process if you're learning a new riff or a tricky section in a bass line. When helping out students with this particular issue, I find out that there's often a kind of middle speed where everything falls apart. They might almost be able to play a tricky section, but they stumble over a few notes. So I often get the student to slow down slightly and then they find they can't play it at all at that speed. So really the key here is to slow it right down, really, really, really slow. Make sure you can play every note perfectly and then incrementally speed the whole thing up again. I'm gonna give you an example to show you exactly how to do this. And the example I've written down on a PDF, you can get that for free in standard notation and tab by clicking the link below in the description. I've also put a second example on there that you can work through yourself using the process that you'll learn in this lesson. The example I'm gonna show you is a short section of a bass line from a show I had to learn a couple of weeks ago. So when I'm given a new show or a new set to learn, I normally just play through the whole set or the whole show, uh, and then I note down the sections that I find hard and tricky. And then what I do is I work on those sections um, for the next week or so before putting the whole thing together again. So it's pointless just playing through it time and time again because um, then you're just practicing the easy bits as well. So you really want to get um, the most bang for buck out of your practice session. And you can do that by focusing on the tricky bits. Now this sounds obvious, but human nature means that um, if we're not careful, we don't do that. We just play what we find easy to play. First of all, I'll play you this example at full speed. Now this isn't an extremely fast riff or lick. Um, it was just tricky for me. I couldn't sight read it perfectly the first time through. Um, I had to work out what the pattern was. So I'm gonna show you how I broke this lick down. If you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by pressing the red subscribe button on the corner of the screen. And if you click the bell and select all, then you'll get notified as soon as I release a new video. First of all, read the lick through. Okay, I do that and I kind of play it in the air. I find that that goes into my brain a lot easier, so you kind of just look through it, play it through uh, slowly in the air a few times. Look for some patterns, see if you can find anything that will make learning this lick easier. Now the first thing I noticed about this lick is that it's um, each bar's repeated, it just starts on a different root note, apart from the last note, okay, in the, in the fourth bar. Uh, and that's a B. On the original show, it's actually a low B on a five string, but I've written this for four string. So, really you only have to learn the fingering pattern for the first bar, and then you can transfer that to each root note. We've got two fingering patterns. So the first one is one, three, four, one. And then we've got two, four, three, four, okay? Two, four, three, four, okay? Um, so let's do the first one. We start on B, the second fret of the A string. We play one, three, four, and then one on the D string. Okay, after four, three, four. That's the first four notes of a minor scale, okay? Okay. And then we've got two, four, three, four on the A string and the D string. Okay. Four, three, four. Again, three, four. Okay, so I kind of learn it like that. I just do the first one. 
slowly. And then the second one. Again. Once I've worked out the notes for notation, then I'll generally, for this kind of thing, remember the fingering pattern, okay? Um, that will help me out once I know the notes. Then I put it together. Okay, try it slowly. Okay, see if you can do that with me. Three, four. Okay, that's the first bar. Now, if you can play that fine, just carry on. If you can't, pause this video and just try that yourself from the PDF, okay? And then carry on with the lesson. Okay, so that's the first bar. If we look at the start of each bar, the first one starts on B, second one starts on E, okay? And then third bar starts on A, and the fourth bar starts on D, okay? So they're our starting point. So we just have to shift this riff. So we start on B. That's once, and then we start on E. And then we start on A. And then we start on D. And then instead of this last one, we just go to down to B there, okay? My second finger. Okay. Okay, so really you learn the first bar and then you learn where the root notes are B, E, and then so you remember you're going to do the riff on B, the riff on E, and then you're going to jump to the riff on A and the riff on D. Okay, you've got to have these starts of the bar clear in your head, okay, because when you do it fast, you just got to know where you're jumping to, okay. Okay, so I didn't have it that fast, first of all, I've just been playing it for a few weeks, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you um, how you can speed it up. I'm going to start at 140 beats per minute and um, go up to the target speed of 180 beats per minute. Um, I'm just going to do it once each time, but what you do is you do this over several weeks. Just stay on 140 until you're happy and then move up incrementally, even if you just did it 5 BPM at a time, okay? But I'm just going to show you it in one go. So that demonstrates how you speed it up, but you do that over a couple of weeks, as I said, okay, until you get to the target speed. But don't move on until you're really comfortable, okay? If you start fluffing the notes, then stay at that target speed. And also, don't do it with the metronome until you know all the notes, until you're kind of ready to start getting it up to speed. So hopefully that's given you a kind of taste of how to work on a tricky section of a bass line or a tricky riff or a tricky lick. Okay, don't just try and play it through loads of times at full speed, hoping that it's gonna get better because it won't. Um, so slow it right down, okay? Um, and just try it, if you're playing, some, if you're struggling with something, try it a little bit slow and you'll find that it probably falls apart, okay? Um, that's pretty natural. Um, but remember, just start slow, work it out, and then work it up to speed. Um, in the long run, you'll be able to play um, the riff or the lick much more accurately um, and you will actually be able to play it at full tempo. Now as I said that's not really mega fast um, 
but it's the same process if you're getting something a lot faster. So I hope that helped you. It's really important to slow things down. Students often ask me how they play faster. This is how you do it, okay? Um, you slow it down and then you gradually speed it back up again. Um, so let me know in the comments what you thought of this. If you've got any tricks, um, if you some of you might play really fast stuff and you might have methods for doing that that's different to this, just let me know in the comments. I love reading all those and I'll reply to all of them. You can also help me out by liking and sharing this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. And if you felt you got value out of this lesson, you can always buy me a coffee. They're $5. Um, you can see the details at the bottom of the screen here. Or if you go in the description, um, you'll see links there that you can click on. And there's loads of useful stuff down there. And also on my website, gbshed.com, check that out. I've got loads of video courses. I've got my beginner course, um, Zero to Hero, um, loads of other useful stuff on there. So that's gbshed.com. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. Hopefully see you very soon in the next lesson. Thank <music> you.